physics, space-time, other, other sheets of paper in the stack have a slightly different physics because their phases are different, but subtle energies is, is what allows us to interact between these different systems. Um, so I'll skip over the details of all that, but the model does, the model does provide a way, a very natural way, to explain how it is that we can have psychic interaction, remote viewing interaction, uh, affect things at a distance where there's no weakening because um, it's a holographic interaction in four dimensions. So we're able to couple with other objects that are very, very far away from us, um, which you need to be able to have something like this to explain the Princeton data. Um, it also involves this model in the, in the same way explains how teleportation can occur, even all across great distances, because any object really is kind of held in place by its pattern of vibration on the distant matter in the past and future. So that's kind of the secret of the model. So Bob and Roe was right. We're more than our physical bodies through prayer, meditation, and visualization. We can create the world we want. And as Victor Hugo said, all the armies of the world are not as powerful as an idea whose time has come. So that's my website. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? Right here. Has there been any uh, frequencies or a range of frequencies in the spectrum identified with any of the paranormal phenomena? Um, I, I think a lot, a lot of times, I mean, there are, hmm. <laughs> I, I don't know. That, that's probably my, my real answer, I don't know. Uh, if you want to say some kind of mapping between a paranormal phenomenon and a frequency, I don't know. Uh, when, when people are beginning to undergo an out-of-body experience, for example, when their astral body is starting to detach from the physical, they often get a vibration, they often get a buzzing, um, and abductees report something similar. So there probably is some kind of frequency interaction, but I don't know that there's a specific frequency. It may be that, you know, I don't know beyond that. Have yes, yes have you done any work with uh, uh, time travel, such as uh, what's been reported at Domenher in Italy? Um, what is going on now, the, the Russians have developed a model. Uh, back in the 50s it began. It's called torsion. If you look on the web, you can find allusions to this stuff. Uh, Kozarev, Nikolai Kozarev was the creator of it. And in the original book, Psychic Discoveries Behind the Iron, Iron Curtain by Ostrander and Schroeder, they have a whole chapter about him at that time. That appears to have been the beginnings of a whole technology of how to control time. There are people in Russia today that have little generators that manipulate and create this energy, and they claim that it can slow down or speed up time by a small amount inside a box. So. Um, it, it looks as though there might be a technology emerging for how to affect the stuff. The bigger question is in terms of time loops, if you could really make big time jumps, you know, go back in time, affect the timeline that we're on, shift over to some parallel system. This is one area that we're seeing now in healing. There's a man named Richard Bartlett who's been doing some amazing healing where it looks as though maybe he's jumping timelines. I mean, it's something that and our physics is like totally verboten. But um, if that's what's happening, we may be entering a, a, you know, a new paradigm here. Uh, so I, I don't know the, where this is all going to fall out, but there's some possibilities that are kind of appearing in terms of maybe the timeline is more flexible than we thought. We have a question in the back. Uh, I'd just like to uh, comment about my uh, distress at seeing how frequently you use the term paranormal in your discussion of these phenomena. Uh, Whatever psychic functioning is, it, it is a normal part of the uh, human capabilities and uh, we, we, we ought not to use language that uh, buys into, that, that, that grants half of the debate to hostile critics in advance. Well, if you have a better word, <laughs> if you have a better word, I'll be happy to, to consider it. But if you say normal, most people will not understand what you mean. If you say that levitation is normal, um, and most people would not buy into that. So We're using consciousness in this meeting. 
yeah, we can, we can find other words, but paranormal is a descriptive word. Um, and I would like to see the stigma taken away from it. Here's another question. <clears throat> In the same vein, I'm wondering if you could define your use of the word subtle energy, uh, because that seems to be a, an important component of your model. Right. Uh, Bill Tiller has written several books about subtle energy and is one of the people I would point to in terms of uh, defining or popularizing what it is. Um, the, um, it, it appears that um, there's a flexibility that occurs. There's, there's a, he, he describes it as a, a freedom of gauge, where there's a missing degree of freedom that's not in our current physics. Um, and he tries to characterize it by, uh, by subtle energy. The, uh, the Russians talk about it in terms of what they call torsion, which is a twisting of space, and it's actually uh, mediated by spin-spin interactions of particles. So it's, this is a, an effect that um, you can actually connect back to conventional physics. What makes it different from what current physics would predict is that in our current Einsteinian model of physics, there is no torsion allowed in general relativity. If you put it in in the way that the Russians do, then spin-spin interactions start to have a much more powerful effect. So that's the, the, the quantitative model that I would appeal to as far as where subtle energy is going to come out. No, but, one, uh, one last question here. Uh, Claude, I wonder if you could uh, uh, speculate a bit about the possible uh, 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 common role of uh, vacuum phenomena, such as the reorganization of vacuum fluctuations in so-called paranormal phenomena and U UFO phenomena. Well, uh, vacuum <coughs> reorganization or uh, you know, false vacuums, different vacuum states that are not so the, the, the normal plain vanilla vacuum that I grew up knowing and loving, I think is another way of saying that's what subtle energy is. It's, a, it's, it's adding a degree of freedom to the physics uh, so that um, what we see with, with the DNA laser experiments, for example, um, is that we can modify this condition of the vacuum and get anomalous effects that appear to be subtle energy effects. So again, it's suggesting that subtle energy can be looked at as these, these other modified vacuum states. Thank you, Claude. We're about to start a okay. break. You're welcome.